Hello everybody and welcome back to the Jerby Apiary. So we're harvesting from Hive 2. The queen was looking good, the hive is thriving, so I decided to take a couple of frames. I think I'm leaving them plenty of honey to get through the winter with, and I wanted to show some of my harvesting procedures for this. It's a late video, I actually harvested in late September. Okay, time to harvest some honey. I have my honeycomb here. We're gonna do a crush and strain method, which means I'm gonna take the honey, I'm going to cut out the comb. I'm going to put it in this bowl, mash it up, and then I'm going to strain it and do a kettle over a couple of days to get all the honey separated out. Very traditional method. Doesn't require any expensive gear. Some people use a press to do it. I don't have a press, so I'm going to do use this, and I'm just going to keep my knife up just a little bit so it'll go through there like a hot knife through beeswax. That's the honey we've already done from the first frame. And we're on to the second frame now. Pretty hot. There are these wires holding the original beeswax foundation in. So you need to cut along that in order to extract it all without cutting through the wire itself. That's all fresh honey. Nice block of honey comb right there. You could eat that just as is. The capped, caps on the capped honey is a little bit, or a little bit tough, but you could actually eat that just as it is and eat the honey comb too. smell is just phenomenal. And a quick method for getting it mashed up is literally just to you just use your hands. You don't have to do anything beyond that. And just pop it. Essentially this mashing is just to open up all the caps and all the different areas in the comb so that the honey is completely exposed and can drain. And then afterwards you have the beeswax left over that you can make candles and soap or whatever beeswax projects you may have. And into the colander to strain it all out. Try to keep the wax behind and keep the honey separated. Now some bits may get out or get through. It's not a big deal, perfectly edible. But if you don't like that, I've noticed that it floats to the surface and you can skim it off afterwards. And that is your honey straining through the beeswax. This has been straining for maybe a half an hour already. So you can see a lot of it has lost the honey, but there's still some left. So I might squeeze some of that to get it out. That's all there is to it. Okay, next up, this is the next day after having the honey being strained through and kind of dripping down into the pans. And I already took the one batch of beeswax and have it just floating in this water here in order to help separate any remnants of honey, kind of a washing it, if you will, so that I can have it rendered and put it into blocks of beeswax, which would be for a project for another day. I just wanted to kind of show how this all has gone down. That is the leftover beeswax. Still has some coating of honey on there. Definitely still sticky. And of course, 
course, that is all honey. I combined all the honey together into the one pot, and next step was to jar it. I just put it into mason jars. All told, we got 18 pounds of honey between the two hives. Most of that was from hive two. We got about three pounds from hive one. I left a lot of extra for them so they can make it through the winter. If all goes well, I could easily double that next year. I found is rinsing it while in the bag helps get your bag a little cleaner and also kind of keeps it all together to have it somewhat washed before you put it in the bowl. And that's all beeswax. After thoroughly rinsing the beeswax, I then placed it into the water solution to let everything settle out and let the rest of the honey kind of separate off from the beeswax and comb remnants that are on there. After doing that, you kind of let it sit in there, you strain it through that same kind of cloth and let it dry for a few days and you're left with this. At some point, I'm going to learn how to render the beeswax properly and then I can make it into the blocks and bricks and other projects that I can use for the winter. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.